I am going to make a bold statement. In business, there is only one scorecard. Go to the bank without your financial statements. Sell your business, or most importantly, even take on a managerial or ownership role without your financial statements and see what happens. The problem is that financial statements are designed for geeks. They are static, lifeless documents that are difficult to gain any meaning from. Global Financial Bridge converts these lifeless documents into a dynamic one-page scorecard that anyone can easily gain instant understanding and take necessary actions and make those good decisions to improve your business. By integrating the income statement with the balance sheet, Global Financial Bridge converts your business into five key focus areas. Think about it. Five things that you have to master and you will have an outperforming business. You can take your learning and future strategies and instantly create your projected income statement, balance sheet and cash flow, all automated for you. Our starting point is the traditional income statement and balance sheet. What does this mean to us? How do we make good decisions from this? How do we use this critical information to tell us what to do in the future? Where must we focus our business activities to maximize our growth, profitability and cash? By clicking on the one-page scorecard, we can now integrate the management of the income statement and balance sheet within these five key areas that we need to know about our business. We call these five business focus areas the chapters to your financial statement story. Chapter 1 tells us how effectively you're growing. What we want is good growth. So chapter two tells us how you are converting growth into superior profitability. Chapter three integrates the management of the balance sheet with specific focus on working capital. So chapter four is now all about the key, which is the combination of how well you manage chapter one, two, and three. And lastly, chapter five is all about how we are creating wealth. We call this the return on your capital employed. We are now in a position to tell our story. We have grown our business by 23%. Chapter two tells us that we have not improved the quality of our profit based on this growth. Chapter three shows us that our balance sheet has become more hungry and is cash absorbing while we grow. And this is clearly shown in chapter four with our negative cash flow. Chapter five tells us that our growth has not created additional value. Our goal was not to grow our business by 23%, but rather to achieve a 30% growth rate. Simply, we do a what if targeting the 30% growth goal. Now we are in a position to identify what our business would look like if we had achieved our goal. The problem is that we are not sure if this growth is value accretive. To explain what happens, based on our what if, we press the net change button. This tells us the impact of the additional growth. We have missed our revenue targets by $200,000 and we determine that this growth is cash absorbing. Why do we need an additional $6,000 of cash to fund our growth? We turn to our cash flow analysis to find the answer. In chapter two, we identify we are not creating superior profit from the growth, and we notice that our gross profit margins are in decline. What is the cost of this margin destruction? We see that the near 4% margin destruction caused a profit decline of $142,000 and a cash decline of nearly $114,000. Our working capital review shows that the average collection period from our customers has increased from 46 to 55 days. How did this impact our cash? 
the additional nine days meant that we should have had $93,000 more in the bank today. There is so much to learn about cash, but for now, we know that we are cash absorbing when we grow. This needs to change. Chapter 5 of our story shows our return on the invested dollar is in decline. This is of concern. Using this information, we are now in a position to evaluate our future. We do this through our automated budgeting system. What we are presented with are the key strategic drivers to our future financial performance. Strategically, we are going to slow our growth, focusing on those more profitable customers that pay us well. Our projected growth rate is 15%. We will improve our gross profit margins to 40%. Our variable operating costs that are mainly commission-based will stay at 15% and our fixed operating costs or overhead will increase to $450,000 due to the hire of the additional salesperson. Depreciation will increase due to the additional capital expenditure program. Our average cost of debt will remain at 8%. We will improve our collection rate to 50 days. Our inventory has got out of hand and should improve to 110 days. Lastly, we need to pay our vendors faster, budgeting a 70-day settlement period. Our capital expenditure will be $50,000 due to the additional technology that we will implement. Now we have a future income statement and balance sheet. Let's evaluate the financial outcome of our strategy. By selecting the budgeted period, we can evaluate the one-page scorecard of the future. We notice that we like what we see. Profit is improving. Cash is in a strong, positive place and our returns have improved. We can now consider tweaking the plan. For the first time, we've determined the impact of paying a owner's distribution. Inputting a $150,000 distribution shows that from a cash position, this is very doable. We update our scorecard. The key reports we need are instantly available. Our income statement, our balance sheet, our cash flow, our key performance indicators are all done for us. By exporting this to Excel, we can do any further work if required. During the length of this presentation, which I believe is about eight minutes, you have evaluated your business. You have identified the key things that you need to work on and you have determined the financial outcome of doing those things. Why would you not do this for your business?